Hi there, my name is Frances Hume and I work for a charity called Interfaith Scotland. Now, many of you will have been working or studying from home over the past few months and I'm no different. I'm coming to you today from my living room and it's lovely to be able to talk to you. And uh, in this uh, next week while, we're going to be looking at Interfaith Scotland and what we do finding out a bit more about what interfaith is all about. We'll talk a bit about Scottish Interfaith Week that takes place in November. And I'm gonna show you some interesting objects and have a little bit of music along the way as well. So first of all, I have a little question for you. What do you think interfaith is? Well, if you have a look at the word, it's also up here inter and faith. So faith can mean religion or belief, something you have faith in. Now you don't need to be religious to believe in something. You might believe in something such as animals should be treated nicely. So that's a belief and uh, an issue that's something that you might care about. So faith, religion, belief, and inter means together, so coming together. So interfaith is about talking to people from different faiths and beliefs, and through that, making new friends and learning to respect and love and understand one another better. Now, when people of different faiths and beliefs come together and talk to each other, they find out that they have quite a lot in common that they share. So some of these things include praying or meditating, which means calming your mind. They may have holy books. So for example, the Bible or the Quran. And these are books where wisdom from the different faiths is shared about how to live a good life and be kind to people. It could be that everybody has places of worship where they meet, whether it's a mosque or a synagogue or a church. And obviously the last few months people haven't had that chance to meet together, which is quite sad for people, but that's an important part of people's faith. And finally, caring for others. And there's something called the golden rule. Now, I don't know if you've had uh, any idea about that before, if you've heard about that before. Sometimes in school there's golden rules, might be things like don't steal from somebody else or don't do somebody else's homework. Now, if you look at all the holy books, like I mentioned, in all of those holy books, there's something in there about telling people to treat other people the way that you want to be treated or not to treat people the way you wouldn't want to be treated. So that's a way of motivating and encouraging people of different faiths and beliefs to treat other people well. And what can this mean? This could mean working together to create a better world where we care for people more and also care for and look after the environment. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my own story now and how I got involved in interfaith. So I come from a little village called Helen's Bay in a place called Northern Ireland. And you can see there a lovely beach and that was the beach at the village where I grew up, where I used to love to go for walks and swimming in the sea. And on the right of the beach is a picture of a Celtic cross. So I came from a Christian upbringing. My parents were Christians and I learned about that faith. But I also was interested to find out about different faiths as well and people from different countries. So when I grew up, I decided that I was going to go to a country called India and I was going to teach children there. So we have some pictures there of children in India and when I was teaching a lot of these children came from poor backgrounds, they had very very little, but I found that they were also very very positive and they loved having a chance to go to school or if they couldn't go to school we would teach them in special classes and they got to learn different things and they really enjoyed playing and doing stuff and activities with us. Now, while I was there, I met people from lots of different religions as well. Now, I don't know if you can guess some of these pictures, what faiths these people come from. 
So let's start with the top left. We've got some boys there with shaved heads and they're wearing red gowns. Can anybody guess what faith that might be from? Well, they come from the Tibetan Buddhist faith. So they were living in a monastery and I stayed for a little while and every morning at six in the morning, they would get up and you could hear their beautiful chanting in the monastery and they called that puja in their temple. Now, I said I grew up in the Christian faith and I'd learned about praying, but from these Buddhist young people, I learned also about meditation and chanting. Now, top right, we've got a girl there and she's wearing a headscarf, also called a hijab. Any idea what faith she might be from? Well, she's from the Muslim faith. So I said she's wearing that head covering. And in India, I met quite a few Muslims and noticed that they were quite happy to pray outside or in the home when I went to visit them. They did their five prayers a day and they didn't mind if you joined in or so watch them uh, joining in. So that was something I learned a lot from as well, that, that they could do their prayers and they didn't mind if you were there and they didn't feel shy or self-conscious at all. So I learned a lot from that. Now, the bottom left, there's some boys with a head covering. I wonder what religion they might be from. Well, if you guessed the Sikh faith, you would be right. So while I was there in India, I went to an amazing temple called the Golden Temple in a city called Amritsar. And this is where people go from all over the world and thousands of people go there every single day. And they get given a free meal called langar. And that will be like a vegetarian curry. And I thought it was amazing that they were so kind and generous that they fed anybody for free that came to the temple. So that's something I learned from the Sikh faith. So we've got one more picture on this screen, the bottom right. We've got some ladies. Any idea what faith they might be from? They're from the Hindu faith. And there were lots and lots of interesting festivals when I was in India. And again, people were very happy for you to join in and see what they were doing and join them in the streets and enjoy the different festivals together. So that was a lot of fun. And I learned a lot from those people from all those different faiths. So when I came back to Scotland, after a few years, I had the chance to work at Interfaith Scotland. And I'm going to be telling you a bit about that. But before I do that, I'm going to show you some objects. And these are from India that I brought back. Some of them are, and some of them are from other countries as well. So, do you remember there was a girl there wearing a headscarf? Well, I have a headscarf here, which I said was called a hijab and is worn by some Muslim ladies. So I'll show you what it looks like. Now this headscarf is lovely and light for the summertime and you might see some Muslim girls and women going around uh, the country uh, in Scotland and other countries wearing a headscarf. So if you see that you might say oh they might, might, might be from the Muslim faith. Now there's head coverings in lots of different faiths and in the Jewish faith, they also have a head covering called uh, a kippah. And this one is from a country called Armenia and actually looks quite similar to uh, a Muslim boy's head covering. So these are both worn by boys, sometimes in their place of worship and sometimes every day. So this is another head covering, which I think looks very attractive. Now, You'll remember that I talked a little bit about prayer and meditation and the Tibetan Buddhist boys in the temple. And a couple of things that you see in Tibet, one of them is prayer flags. Now, if you look carefully, you can see that there's something written on those flags. And these are hung up, especially in high mountain places in the Himalayas. And when the wind comes, the flags shake and the idea is it's like the prayers going out into the world 
So that's prayer flags. It's a lovely idea. There's also something called a prayer wheel. And if I get the top off there, you'll see that there's some prayers <laughs> written in Tibetan. There we go. Have a little look there. Got some prayers. And put that lid back on. And move that round and round. Again, this is like the prayers going out into the world. So it's a nice idea or symbol about prayer. Two other things that I saw in the monastery. We have some, these are called tingsa and these are bells. And again, you'll see that there's some texts on these from the, the faith, from their scriptures. And one of the things we do in meditation is to listen to the sound of the bells. And as the sound goes away, you can think about um, calming your mind. Now, I'm not going to do this for very long because sometimes um, online you don't always hear the sound very well. So I don't want to play it for too long. So I'm just going to quickly demonstrate um, the bell and then I'm going to show you a singing bowl as well. So this is what the, the bell or the tingsa sounds like. And now we have a singing bowl, which is on a lovely cushion. And I'm going to play this now. So I'm going to hit the side and go round and round and you can hear the sound coming from the singing bowl. And this is also used in meditation. So those are some religious objects, some which I brought back from India and some which I brought, uh, got in this country as well. So now we're going to have a little think or look at what kind of interfaith activities you might be able to get involved in in Scotland itself. So you don't have to go overseas, you can do things in your own country too. So what about an example here, visiting places of worship. Now this picture here is of some young people in a synagogue in Glasgow called Garnet Hill Synagogue and this is a beautiful old um, synagogue from the Jewish faith so they've gone to visit that and find out a bit more about the faith. You might want to share food together. Now you remember I spoke about the Golden Temple in India where the Sikh people came from all over the world. Now there's plenty of Sikh temples called Gurdwaras in Scotland and other places of worship as well. Uh, people offer food, so you can have food and if you go into any Sikh temple, or you could bring food and meet together and enjoy food from various different cultures and backgrounds and faith with each other. You might also want to visit spiritual places here in Scotland. So for example, the island of Iona off the island of Mull, in the northwest of Scotland, and that's a special place of pilgrimage for Christians as St Columba came from Ireland and shared Christianity with the people of Scotland. Then there's Holy Isle off Arran, and that's where there is a Tibetan Buddhist centre. They have an interfaith centre where people can come from all faiths or no particular religion. If you like playing football, why not host an interfaith football match for people from all different faiths and backgrounds? Now, there's 20 local interfaith groups in Scotland, all the way from Shetland down to Dumfries and the borders. And people in those groups put on events all over the country and especially during interfaith week. And also we have school workshops. So I have a group of volunteers from all different faiths who go into primary and secondary schools who talk about interfaith 
and talk about their faith and what it means to them. So it's a great opportunity for school pupils to ask any question they like and find out about what that personal experience is for that person of that particular religion. Now, I've mentioned Scottish Interfaith Week, and this year we have a special theme, which is connecting. And as you can see, the week is taking place in 2020 from the 8th to the 15th of November. Now, we chose the theme connecting because we realised that a lot of people would have been having a difficult time not being able to go out and about during lockdown. They might be missing family, they might be missing friends, they might be missing going to a place of worship and all the other fun things that you would normally do outside your house. So it's still so important to keep connecting with one another even when we can't meet in person, whether it's through watching videos or chatting online to family and friends, connection is so important. And interfaith is also all about connecting, connecting with people who are different to you, who might have different beliefs, but we're all part of that same human family. So if you'd like to take part in Scottish Interfaith Week, there's lots of different ways of getting involved. So I've mentioned that we go into schools and bring people of different faiths. Well, this year we're going to do that, but online. We're going to have a show called Ask Me Anything. Now, if you're watching this video before October, you will have a chance to put your questions in. So send them in to us at Interfaith Scotland. If you have questions from anyone for, for anyone from the Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Sikh, Hindu, Buddhist or Baha'i faiths, you can pose those questions and we will ask those to the people of different faiths. We'll make videos and then show them every day during Interfaith Week. Now you can also plan an event for Scottish Interfaith Week and we have a special Scottish Interfaith Week website and you can put your events up on that site and everybody can see them and come and join in. We will also be hosting our own online events and local interfaith groups will be doing the same. So these events could be things like films, talks, discussions, maybe learning how to cook Indian food or doing drumming and other kinds of music. So you could put on an event or you could go on and join other people's events as well. Now, the last thing before I say goodbye today is I have written a little song. And this is a song that I wrote during lockdown to share some of my thoughts and feelings about being in lockdown because obviously it's been a difficult time for a lot of us but we have to support each other, come together, connect with one another and enjoy each other's company whether it's with other people or online or singing and speaking to one another. So there's a chorus and there's also a few verses. So I'm going to sing the chorus and I'd love you after I've sung it the first time to join in second time round. Then I'll sing the verses and if everyone watching could join in with the chorus that would be brilliant. So this is called a ukulele and I was given this as a special present during lockdown. So I've been learning the ukulele in the evening and I've written this song for you all called Let's Love One Another, We're All Sisters and Brothers. Now, we might not have brothers and sisters, but as I said, we're part of the same human family, so we can all love one another. and run. 
Amen. Let's all love one another. We're all sisters and brothers. Let's all love one another. We're all sisters and brothers. Sometimes we find we're feeling sad. The whole wide world is driving us mad. Sometimes we're feeling blue, but then you know just what to do. And what is that? Let's all love one another. We're all sisters and brothers. Let's all love one another. We're all sisters and brothers. One last time. So, before I leave you, I just wanted to tell you a bit more about how you can get involved with Scottish Interfaith Week. I mentioned that we're going to have a programme called Ask Me Anything. So if you'd like to ask questions to people from the different faiths, and you're seeing this before the 1st of October, you can get those into us at the following email on your screen info at scottishinterfaithweek.org. Now, if your school or you are planning to put on an event during Interfaith Week, you can advertise it on our website. And the link is there on the screen too. That's scottishinterfaithweek.org forward slash submit an event. And at the bottom of the screen there, you can see our different social media handles for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. So you can follow those as well if you'd like to find out more about Scottish Interfaith Week. So we hope you get a chance to get involved and uh, hopefully I may get to see you in person someday and not just through this screen here. Bye for now.